Hey everybody, it's Mr. Ben here, back with another quick lesson. We're going to look at another section of notes on waves, and we're going to focus on light this time. So the big thing, the big distinction we need to make for light right off the bat is that a light wave is electromagnetic. One big word, electromagnetic. And what that means is it does not, doesn't need matter to carry it. So remember, sound waves are mechanical. They had to have something to carry it. Light waves are totally different by nature. They are electromagnetic, so they do not need matter to carry them. And that's good. If, it, if they weren't electromagnetic, the sun's light and energy would never make it to the Earth because space is a vacuum. And electromagnetic waves, or EM waves, are on this big spectrum, and we're going to fill this in. So starting with the visible light, we have this tiny little slice here in the middle. Um, and this is the entirety of light that you and I can see. And we can split this up into individual colors. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. Indigo is kind of this weird blue, not quite blue, not quite purple in between. And they always follow the same word, and we're going to talk about that down here at the bottom of the page in just a minute. Before I go any further, I do want to say though, on this diagram, so on to our left we have very short waves, and to the right we have longer waves. It's a spectrum, so our wavelength is changing as we move from left to right. Short waves have high energy, they have a higher frequency. Okay, so make sure this is also written down as well if you're following along for notes. So short waves have high energy, long waves have low energy or lower energy. So let's go to the high energy side first. Just to the left of the visible light spectrum, we've got ultraviolet or UV light. And we experience UV light when we get sunburns or sun suntan. I like to use sunburn because it's a little bit more dramatic. We know what that feels like. I cannot see it with my eyes, but I can feel it. So our skin absorbs this wavelength and it does some damage to us. That's why sunblock's a good idea because it blocks this UV light. If we go down a little bit further, kind of a larger chunk this time, these are the X-rays. So x-rays, this is like the x-ray at the hospital. Your skin doesn't absorb the x-ray. It actually passes clean through it, and your bones absorb that energy. So these are higher energy. They get deeper into your body. Uh, so again, used for imaging bones, deep tissues, things like that. And these are more dangerous. You do not want to be exposed to x-rays too often. Uh, and then one more step towards the high energy. These are called gamma rays, G-A-M-M-A -M -M -A rays. And this is like radiation from a nuclear reaction. So really, really high energy, very powerful. These kind of cook your DNA as they pass through you, so they're not good. You don't want to be exposed to gamma rays. Going the other direction, we've got another small block right on the other side of visible light. And so I need to come down here so I need to have more room. This is the infra, I-N-F-R-A, red. And this is heat. So we can still experience this energy. We cannot see it, but we experience it as heat. Moving along, kind of another big chunk. These are the microwaves. And this is the same as the microwave in your kitchen this time. So it's putting out a wavelength that actually vibrates water molecules. And that vibration causes some heat to build up, which cooks your food. So microwaves are longer waves than our visible light. And then finally, in the end, these are radio waves. Now. A radio wave and a microwave can, and obviously heat, can still hurt you. So just because they're longer and lower energy does not mean they are not dangerous at certain times. And that has to do with the amplitude of the wave. So don't forget, we're, when we talk about the strength of a wave, we talk about the amplitude or the height of it, as well as the frequency. So really what this means is that we can see a tiny portion, just a very, very small slice of the EM spectrum, and that's what we can see. We can experience other kinds. Finally, the last question is, we know light's electromagnetic because of something called refraction. So I can split light into its individual pieces using something called a prism, and we can measure different wavelengths of light. So really, visible light is a combination of all of these colors. So the white light coming from my lamp right now is a combination of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet wavelengths of light. So what does that look like? Well, in a prism, in a lab setting, we're going to do this in class. And there's also demos you can use online and videos you can look up. But essentially, you have a beam of light that comes in. So this is light of some kind, white light preferably. And it is refracted, or it's bent by this prism 
so it starts to take a new path and when it comes out it's bent one more time and we get this spectrum of red orange yellow green blue indigo and violet it looks like a rainbow and this is how rainbows are made raindrops actually play tiny little prisms so as the light comes into it it bounces around and it comes back out split up into these individual pieces so light is electromagnetic it does not need matter to carry it uh, make sure you understand the regions of electromagnetic light or energy on this scale and if you have questions you can either leave a comment in the comments below um, or I will see you in class.